Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios alongside Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. It's Mark's Madness time here on WOSN and what a time for it. Week 10 coming up. We've got a lot to sort out. Playoff yeah. positions, league titles. Mm -hmm. Let's jump right in. Week 10, we've been talking about it all season <laughs> long. Spencerville versus Jefferson. Here we yeah. go. They're both 6-0 and in the NWC. Yeah. Winner takes the league title. Who do you have? Well, you know, last year I thought it was going to be a, a a real close game and ended up being Jefferson 21 nothing. Now I know some turnovers and some things entered into that, but this is a tough one. Yeah. I, it, it's at Spencerville, so I always think that the home team has an advantage of sorts. Um, these are two really good football teams. This game could take like 53 minutes to play, you know, because they're going to run it and run it and run it and try to drive it and control the, the clock. Um, Spencerville is the best offense in the area at over 46 points a game. Jefferson, the only blemish is against maybe the best team in at least the bottom five divisions. Um, th this is going to be a great, great football game. The weather hopefully will clear out by then, and I think this is going to be one for the ages. Both teams coming off big wins. Delphus Jefferson beat Ada by 50, and Spencerville over Allen East 48-27. How about the Bearcats 9-0 and for the first time since 1963? This is yeah. a big deal. Yeah, this is a big deal, and to think just a few years ago they had trouble winning a game. You know, but that thing turned, and and the communities jumped on board, and, and the players believe in John Zerbe's um, coaching style and his philosophy. And the same can be said for Chris Summers at Jefferson. I mean, it, just his second year, and, and while they've had some recent success, they've really bought into what Chris wants to do. It's going to be a very good game. You'll be able to see it on WOSN. I want to congratulate Zach Gokey, who broke the single yeah. season school rushing record yeah. and something that we kind of saw coming, but it's, you know, yeah. he's been delivering week after week. He had yeah, he has. two touchdowns again. Yeah, kind of a down one. week, yeah. only 141 yards. He <laughs> yeah. used to going for 200 plus, but yeah, he's, uh, he's as good all around player as there is in our area. We said that preseason and he has done nothing but uh, enlarge upon that, you know, title. And as far as playoff positions go, Spencerville's number three in Region 22. They've clinched their playoff spot, but now Jefferson, they're sixth in the same mm -hmm. region. They control their own destiny, so win and in. Yeah. But there is a chance they could lose to Spencerville and not make the playoffs, which would, yeah. would, would seem pretty unfair. Shame. Yeah, that would be yeah. a real shame to lose to Coldwater and Spencerville, two undefeated teams, and not make the playoffs at 8-2. and two. While you're going to look at it later on, a lot of other teams in those smaller divisions barely have a winning record, and they're going to get in the playoffs. So... It's all where you're at and who you're playing. And, uh, you know, if you're the NCWC commissioner, you're probably hoping that they both get in somehow. You know, I'm not going to say who's going to win, who's going to lose, but yeah. uh, you want as many teams from your, your league in the playoffs. And, and it'd be great to see them in the playoffs, maybe even a rematch down the road. Right. So it's essentially a playoff game for Jefferson. I'm sure Spencerville will treat it like a playoff game with the NWC title on the line yep. and the regular season. Now, elsewhere in the Northwest Conference, eight is still alive. They're mm -hmm. seventh in Region 26. They control their own destiny despite yep. the loss to Delphus Jefferson last week. Yeah, and they got Allen East. That's not going to be easy. Allen East had a great year, you know, and, and uh, so that, that game, if they win that one, they'll earn their playoff spot. But certainly right there preparing for it. What, what more can you ask for but to be – Thinking about playoffs going into your last game. Definitely. Grove over Paulding 47-12 and Bluffton over Crestview 41-28 mm -hmm. this past week. So Bluffton's now 9 uh -huh. in Region 22. Grove uh -huh. is 12 in Region 20, and they play each other next week. So right. there is a chance the winner will get into the postseason. That's right, because the winner's going to get some points. This game's at Grove, but this, this will be a good one. You know, Bluffton Grove down through the years have been great football games. Looking forward to that one as well. So the NWC, a lot of intriguing storylines. Mm -hmm. And how about Crestview? Number six <laughs> yeah. in Region 24. They're, what's their, they have three wins? Four and five? Yeah, yeah four wins. They four and five or they win three or four? I'm I don't even they've sure. They've got a losing yeah. record, yeah. but they're sitting right there. They win this when they're in. And that's, that's another example of, you know, take it one week at a time mm -hmm. and come week 10, you're going to have a chance to play that's to get right. in. And I think Crestview has that right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to the track now. Lima Senior knocks off Clay 46-16, as we expected. Mm -hmm. And now the Spartans set themselves up for what's going to be an exciting Week yeah. 10 matchup against Toledo Central Catholic. Yeah. And if they win, at least a share of that mm -hmm. track title. Yeah, and probably a home playoff game. Yes. Um, and, you know, we've looked at two leagues so far, and it comes down to the very last game of the season to determine the league championship and also a lot of playoff rankings. But, uh, you know, th this will be interesting uh, because... Toledo Central Catholic defending state champs, you know, playing a lot of young guys early. They lost a couple of non-league games, but they righted the ship. They're playing really well right now, as is Lima Senior, who's added some dominant defense with that dominant offense. And this is a, another one of those deals. It's going to be a great game. 
Well, I'm a senior's number five in Region 6, so as you mm -hmm. said, a win would probably vault them into hosting a playoff game, maybe as high as the two in that right. region. And I think they just need to play clean. You know, they've got the ability. You know, they, they cannot give up some turnovers, bad penalties, busted assignments. They've got to play clean to beat a team like Toledo Central Catholic. And that's what Mike Fell wants anyway, because you get into the playoffs, now you're playing all good teams, and you've got to continue to play that way to win and go on. Finley falls to Whitmer 41-24, so the Trojans' playoff hopes looking pretty dim. They're number 21 in Region yeah. 1. Now, remember, the top 16 teams make that mm -hmm. the postseason in Region 1. Yeah, so they're not as far out as 21 sounds like. Yeah. But, yeah, they ran into a buzzsaw the second half of the season. You know, tough they, schedule. They, yeah, tough schedule. In the BVC, more exciting Week 10 action coming up. <laughs> McComb, three, huh? Yeah, McComb <laughs> shuts out Arlington 35 to nothing. So now they'll play for the Blanchard Division title against LB. McComb mm -hmm. is number one in Region 24. They've already clinched a home game. Yep, and best defense in our area, four and a half points a game. And biggest differential between winning and the, they have won by over 36 points a game on the average. Uh, just dominant after that opening season loss to Marion Local. You don't yeah. have to say anything no more shame about in that. that. And LB, you know, a couple of losses are used to breezing through that, that regular season. They played a tougher schedule this year than usual and had an injury to Kraft, and, and, but they're right there. They're right there at 4-0. What more could you ask for out of those guys than to be ready to play for a, a division championship and get into the playoffs? And not only an important game in the BVC for Liberty Benton, but they're ninth in Region 16, so it's basically a playoff game against That's them right. because you know the points that they'll pick Lots up if they points, beat yeah. Macomb will vault them in. Yeah. Into the post. And Macomb all, is all set. They're already, you know, clinched a, a home game. So that'll be a, a fun game. Yeah. And then Arlington's number eight in yeah, Region 24. They exactly. control their own destiny against mm -hmm. a, a gritty Corey Rawson team week 10. Yeah. So the yeah. BBC could have a bunch of teams in after yeah. all of this. Yeah, they could. You know, Van Buren is right there. The great bad start 03 since then. They're, they've run the table. Um, Lipsick, you know, it's sitting at four and five. Looks like they're going to get in or a good chance to get in. So, yeah, there, there could be four, three, four, five, maybe, probably four yeah. teams out of the BVC that gets in there. Lipsick's fifth in Region 24. They control their own destiny, according to Joe Idle. And then Van Buren's eight in Region 20, and they're coming off a big win over Liberty Benton. They got Pandora Gilboa in Week 10, yeah. and if they win, it looks like they're in. Yeah, and it's not an easy one either. PG's pretty good, and, and they've got something to play for too. But that's, that's a, you know, what a finish for Van Buren. You know, you, you want to remember that one if you're a coach that gets off to a slow start and throw their film on, see what happened and why they were able to get better and maintain it throughout. Seeking their second postseason appearance in school history, of course, last year when they made history mm -hmm. by getting to the playoffs for the first time. All right, wild, wild Western Buckeye League time mm -hmm. now. Wapakoneta, big win over St. Yeah. Mary's, 46-7. Yeah. to seven. Why don't we dive right in, take a look at mm -hmm. a couple of the plays okay. that made this one stand out for the Redskins. Yeah, it really is Wapak and then everybody else. And, and this was a rivalry game with Doug Fry and his St. Mary's Rough Riders coming back to town. And who are we going to look at first? Cameron Lau, man on wide. Look Two at scores. the blocking Here's up Lowe. front. He's got the well, quickness. He gets into the end the zone, 10. hit there at the three, and, and carried into the... He did. Touchdown. Into the red turf there for a touchdown. Another one of his many touchdowns. You see the fullback leading and then the guys, the tight end working downfield. That's just really good blocking. He is so quick. Now, with the threat of him, we're going to fake it to him. And then Aaron Huffman's going to keep it. And nobody touches him till right about there. And then he carries him all the way down to the six or seven. So anytime you've got Lauk on one side and you can give a little play action, whether you're going to throw it or run it, look at the yellow hats going after Lauk. And there's Huffman with the ball going the other direction. And he's a good athlete and a good runner, too. A tall kid, you don't think of him as a runner, but in this offense he is. He can also throw it a little bit. Then the last play, we're going to go back to Cameron Locke again. Uh, look at the blocking on this play. Well, you know, there's the guard trap, the fullback kick out. They're, they're all blocking, but there's not a crease where he's looking for it. And now his athletic ability takes over. Look at Huffman, the quarterback, getting downfield. Block that guy right out of bounds. Locke's still going. That is just an amazing run. When things break down and it doesn't go like the playbook says it should, uh, it's kind of nice to rely on an athletic ability. Nothing, nothing starts to bounce it, starts to cut it back. His guys are still working for him. And now Huffman says, ah, there goes Cameron again. I better do something. And look at the, the vision here. He slows up to let Huffman get in front of him. That's just really good running back play. And that's why he is, uh, well, 
He's the best running back in the WBL, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, what a season for him. What a season for Wapak. They're number one in Region 10. Mm -hmm. I think these are numbers are correct. 27 straight wins in the Amazing. regular season. Yeah. Travis Moyer, 77 straight wins in the regular mm -hmm. season if you go back to his previous coaching job. So yeah. they're going to be the team to beat in yep. Region 10 for sure. No doubt. And yep. we'll look forward to see what they come up with in the postseason. St. Mary's is now Region uh, number nine, I should say, in Region 10, and they'll play OG Week 10. They could still get in. That's a yeah. big game, OG. That is a huge game for both teams. They're not assured of anything, and they're going to get lots of points no matter who wins, and the loser may drop all the way out. Speaking of the Titans, they're coming off a loss to Elida, mm -hmm. who's now won four in a row, 28-21, probably the game of the week in yeah. the WBL. It was goal line stand in the fourth yeah. quarter for Great Elida. Game. Yeah. yeah, Elida, you know, they hadn't beaten OG in a long, long time, and uh, they got down and they tied it up and went up and they were able to hold it off and just everything that that they did in that game uh, was what they needed to do to beat a quality team and get back in that playoff hunt and there they are sitting at number 10. So region 8 they could still get in and all of Good. a sudden we could have a more teams from the WBL yeah. than we originally thought. They've got the to beat Bath that's yeah. not going to be easy you Bath's know, because playing well Elida well. likes to yeah. run it and Bath has the best run defense around uh, playing at Bath rivalry game um, now Bath, you know, a little tougher for them to get into playoffs, but they still got a lot to play for. And, uh, and Eli has to have some other teams above them lose. So there's a lot that has to happen. But uh, like I said, you're still playing for a chance. It, it motivates you. Salina wins big over Shawnee. The Bulldogs are number five in Region 10. They've yep, got a good get chance. In. They play Kenton. They they'll get Kenton. in. And then Van Wert against Wapak. The Cougs are 15th in Region 12, so they're looking to play spoiler against the Redskins and, and keep them from that perfect season. And yeah. they've already clinched the WBL title, yeah. has Wapak, but uh, Van Wert will play this game it tough. Wouldn't it mean a lot to the Cougar, having lost the way that they've lost so many close games, to get a win over Wapak and finish off a really nice season, that, that would be huge. And I'm sure that Coach Recker's talking to him about that. You know, this is the way we want to finish our season, guys. Definitely, yeah. definitely. All right, let's go to the MAC. Fort Recovery yeah. beats St. Henry. You were there, 8-7. to yeah. seven. Yep. The play that put them on top, a botched extra point, turns into a two-point conversion. It's the only scoring of the game for Fort Recovery. They're number three in Region 26. They've clinched a playoff spot, and St. Henry is now eliminated from the postseason with four losses. Yeah, and those four losses, Name Coldwater, yeah. Minster, Marion Local, Fort Recovery, four teams that are going to be in the playoffs and maybe playing for state championships. So it's a shame a team like that with four losses doesn't get in because they're, they're much better than a lot of teams with two or three losses, you know, but... Uh, yeah, their season will end on Friday, um, but Fort Recovery and the other guys are still rolling, and it's just the start of season number two, and how many state championships can that league win this year, I think. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see in Divisions 5, mm -hmm. 6, and 7. Coldwater, Minster, and Marion Local, there's 5, 6, and 7 for you right there, or mm -hmm. five, actually 5, 7, and 6 in that order mm -hmm. division-wise. They all pick up league wins. Mm -hmm. Cavs are number three in Region 18. They've clinched a home game. Yep. Minster's number one in Region 26. They've clinched a home game. And Marion Local's number one in Region 22. They've clinched a playoff spot. They all have league games in Week 10. Uh, Minster has Parkway, Marion Local, DSJ. Uh, I'm not sure who Coldwater I think Coldwater plays New Bremen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you look at it, and upsets are possible, but you'd, you'd think that they're yeah. going to win out. Yeah. yeah, so that looks like it's pretty straightforward. And if the Cavs do beat New Bremen, they will clinch the league title mm -hmm. and an undefeated season. <laughs> yeah, and, and a fabulous season. Yeah. I mean, uh, and they're healthy. You know, that's what you look at at this point in the season, too, is how healthy are you, especially your key guys. And uh, to our knowledge, we're not in their training room, but uh, those teams are pretty healthy and getting ready for playoffs that way. So it'll be fun to follow them in the postseason, just like everyone else. Now to the NWCC, Fort Lormy over USV, 16 yeah. to 12. So now the Big Redskins, mm -hmm. five and one, tied with Riverside atop the league. Yeah, and you know they're they're all looking at a ch chance for playoffs, including Layman Catholic, including USV. They're st still sitting right there, so uh, there there could be several teams from that league get in too. A little bit of a shakeup in the way it happened this year, but yeah, Fort Recovery ends up at the top at the end, like yeah. they, they we they, ended up Fort Lormy, Fort Army, I mean, right? Uh, like they usually do in Layman Catholic is a chance for the playoffs too. So yeah, a little upside down early on, but mm -hmm. we we got to where we thought we were going to be yep. at the end of the season. Yep. Lormy's eighth in Region 26. Riverside's number four in that same region, mm -hmm. Region 26. Yeah. USV's ninth in Region 26, still alive. They've got Ridgemont Week 10. Yeah, could move up. Yeah, they go six and four, you know, get some more points and you never know what happens. They could slide into the playoffs and six and four is a good year no matter what happens. Yes, and Lehman Catholic is number six in region 26. So mm -hmm. NWCC looks to have some playoff teams, could make some noise 
in the second season, as that's we right. say, and that's yeah. always good to yeah. see. Yeah, especially with the MAC, they really do think it's their second season. Right. So when you, you get used to playing five extra games every year, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. All right, and to put a bow on week nine, LCC falls to Bishop Hartley in Columbus, 48-13. So they'll look to salvage a 500 season against Wayne Trace. And that, that's next big. You, you don't want to go out with a losing season. And Wayne Trace, you know, that'll be a good, good battle. But they're down a little bit this year, so T-Birds looking to win that one. Yes. All right, upcoming games to watch. It's mm -hmm. plenty with league title <laughs> implications, plenty with playoff implications. We just mentioned yeah. most of them. What are you focused on heading well, into the I'm final week? I'm looking at the league week. championships. Yeah, you know, right. there's a lot of playoff ramifications, and certainly these have it along with it. But anytime you're playing the last game of the season uh, and either you win it or the team that you're playing wins it, that's a huge, huge game. It doesn't get any more fun than that in high school. So Macomb, Liberty, Benton, you know, for the BVC. Uh, Spencerville, Delphus, Jefferson, Northwest Conference. And Lima Senior Central Catholic for the track, uh, those are the three games that I think are just blockbusters, phenomenal games. Well, we'll have coverage of all of the important games on the Sports Report Friday at 10 p.m. It's our final hour-long Sports Report of the season. And then we'll also have you covered with our rebroadcast schedule. And it begins Friday at 11 p.m. on WOSN with that big one in the NWC, Delphus Jefferson versus Spencerville. Another good one in the Northwest Conference, Friday at 11 p.m. on WTLW, Bluffton versus Columbus Grove. Plenty of playoff implications on the line there. Then Saturday at 4 p.m., early start time, because we'll bring you some Ohio Northern University football live Saturday evening at 6 p.m. But Wapak versus Van Wert, that one will be at 4 p.m. as Wapak goes for the undefeated regular season. And then Saturday at 9 p.m., the Blanchard division will be decided between Macomb and Liberty Benton. So looking forward to it all. Next week, mm -hmm. we will start looking ahead to week 11 and the postseason. We'll have it. We'll know exactly who's in, yeah. who's out, yeah. and who needs to do what to advance on. It should be a lot of fun to yeah. break it all down. Well, thank you very much, Mark Miller. That's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. I'm Matt Finkel. Enjoy week 10.